We said the Lord does not have the power to make you justified. Right? Now, I want to show you why the law does not have that power to make you justify. The law is based on sacrifices. Okay? The law, what did I say? The law is based on sacrifices. You know, they, they, they go, they cut the head of animals, they put it on, on the bronze altar, they lead it on fire, and the smoke goes up straight. And in their minds, in their minds, they think that God is not pleased with them. But what they don't know, that God need no blood sacrifice. God is only looking at them based on the finished work of Jesus before time ever began. Hallelujah. There are sacrifices that the priest will come, the priest will look at the scapegoat and say, lay your hands on the scapegoat. After your hands has been laid on the scapegoat, let the scapegoat go outside the gate and you know all the plenty processes. It got to a stage and God said, hey, stop. I don't want this anymore. I'm not interested in it. Hallelujah. Do you know God actually told them this is not for me and you. He, he, he's, he, he's, he's, I don't want it. I never ask you to do this. Hallelujah. Now you begin to wonder where did the children of Israel got that from? Remember Moses? Moses lived all his life in Egypt. So he grew up, <laughs> he grew up learning the practices of Baal and the worship of Baal. So the way Baal was at peace or Apollos was at peace was by human sacrifices and animal sacrifices. Yeah. That's where some of the African tradition came out from. And remember, God told them that human sacrifices is witchcraft. <laughs> One of the mighty magical scriptures for siphonic forms on Thanksgiving Day is that the king now took his first son and killed and all God did was to accept witchcraft. God accepted witchcraft according to them and turned and began to chase Israel. No matter how much you will give to a father, he will not sell his son out. Except he's a blockhead, dumb, useless father. And God is not a blockhead, dumb, useless. But... Hallelujah. Praise so how can that be possible? That God sold Israel, that he has called my son, my priest, a royal nation for the blood of who? A Gentile. And you not see people, they will not bring Let's not go there. That's Thanksgiving kind of message. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But listen, listen. When you don't give, you don't have seeds that will grow and multiply. There are better ways of teaching conditional and unconditional giving. Amen? Amen. By the glory of God, November is our month of giving. So we will learn everything that God taught on giving. And let me tell you, the cheapest way to miracle and to healing when it comes to finances, you will learn November. Very cheap, very cheap, very cheap. And you will not notice why God says the rich will always be 
Hallelujah. Let me not let me not preach four messages in one. Let me concentrate on my two. Praise God. So they began, they began, God, God, told, God looked at them and said, Israel, Israel, stop all of this. I don't want, I don't want your unjustified offerings of blood. And these unjustified offerings of blood is what now became the hallmark of the old covenant. And he said, that old covenant does not have the ability, the power, to take away sin. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah 7, I'm going to read 3 and I'm going to read 22. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this land. Amend your ways and your doings. And I'll cause you to dwell where? In this land. That's the promised land, Canaan. Hallelujah. If you read down, you see all the things they do. After they've gone to do crazy things and worship bow, they will not come into the temple and sacrifice. And said, because we've sacrificed, God has forgiven us. But God is warning them. <laughs> Amend your ways. Hallelujah. Amen. 22. Or let's read from 21. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, put your burnt offerings, put your what? Burnt offerings onto your sacrifice and eat. What? And eat flesh. For I speak unto your fathers, for, for I speak not unto your fathers, nor command them in that day, in the day that I brought them out of what? Of the land of Egypt, consigning bond offering. Let me show you another translation. Twenty-two, the Message Bible. When I delivered your ancestors out of Egypt, I never said anything to them about wanting bond offering. What is bond offering? Sacrifices. God is saying, I did not tell Moses to begin to kill animal and burning them on the bronze altar for atonement. But watch 23. But I did say this. Command this. Obey me. Do what I say and I will be your God and you will be my Live the way I tell you. Do what I command so that your life will be well. Jesus said, I'm not interested in burnt offering. I have come to do the will of my Father God. I have come to obey. Have you not heard obedience is better than sacrifice? The, the military will say obey first before complain. They took that from the Bible. God is not interested in how much cow and goats you can bring on Thanksgiving Day. God is interested in you 
loving your neighbor as your God is interested in you reverencing him as your oh let me just do this let me do that and I'll bring one millionaire and put in the altar God will not forgive me God is not interested in me hallelujah to so whom much love is given much much love is what For he has loved you above all things. So he expects you to love your neighbor above all things. And guess what? You don't need the Ten Commandments to teach you. Just love. When you love, you keep all the commandments. <laughs> Glory to God. You see, we've been taught that God changes his mind. That's what we've been taught. So when you bring the burnt offering, God will immediately change his mind. God does not change his mind. He has loved you before foundations of the world. He will keep loving you till the end of eternity. He will not change his mind. It is you that decide to go to heaven. It is you that decides to go to hell. The choice is yours. De Deuteronomy 28. He said, choose ye today between good and bad. Between to live and to die. But as God, I urge you to choose life. It is all you. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Let us put us in man so that man will have the ability to decide and create for himself. So whatever man decides, that's where man goes. If you decide to be hardworking, you know where hardworking people go? Wealth. If you decide to be lazy, you know where lazy people go? Poverty. If you decide to be tricky and cunning, you know where cunning people go? Poverty and hell. If you decide to be obedient, full of wisdom, you know where they go? Heaven and wealth. Yes. The choice is yours. It's not in God's hand. To make it better, he said, I have taken all authority in the heavens, on earth, and beneath, and I give it to the church. The gate of hell cannot prevail. Hallelujah! If you are beat down, it's your fault. Yes, sir. If you are not excited about the power of God in the inside of you, the power of God will remain dormant. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whatever you're excited about, you meditate on. And what you meditate on begins to shape in and form your universe. You create every day without knowing. You either create sorrow and hate, or you create light and joy and prosperity. Anything built on sorrow and hate, even if you have a millionaire, the sorrow and hate will swallow up your millionaire. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. The Lord. Do you know God is so merciful that He has actually given us ways to Jesus? I'll say this again because it's so powerful. God is so merciful that he has given us several ways to Jesus. Jesus now became, you have several ways to get to Jesus. Jesus now became the only way to get to the Father. This is so powerful. 
you can lean on the anointing oil in the name of Jesus that will get into Jesus. You can lean on the covenant of salt in the name of Jesus that will get into Jesus. You can lean on the communion table in the name of Jesus that will get into Jesus. You can lean on the healing water in the name of Jesus that will get into Jesus. But all of this put together can get you to the Father God. You miss a good place to scream. Yeah. Hallelujah. The only thing that can get you to the Father God is obedient to the things of Jesus. But a lot of things can get you to Jesus. Because these things are all in the word of Jesus. He so said, when you put my word in your heart, I'll come dwell with you and the Father will come too. Where Jesus is, the Father will be there. But if you don't know how to get to Jesus, then you can get to the Father. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, every time, every time you hear people say, put salt, put water, put this, put that, put this. And have you ever asked, why salt? Hallelujah. Why salt? Jesus looked, 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 looked at them in Mark and said, Sir, you know, after he said, if your eyes, one, your eyes cost you, one of your eyes cost you to see, put it up. Right? He I said, it's, it's better to go to heaven with one eye. Right? Amen. Than to go to heaven and to go to hell with both eyes. Hallelujah. Now you must understand when Jesus is talking about parable, or there's, there's this word they call it, that analogy or something, right? You, you should understand when he's using that, a description. But God does not want anybody to come like an Apollo, one leg up now or something, or broken hand or blind eyes. God does not want anybody to come like that to heaven, so he heals everybody. Then when you die deformed, your spirit resurrected full, whole, and complete. Right? Glory to God. Praise God. But Jesus was only using that to point a picture, or paint a picture to them. Amen? Praise God. Now watch. Shortly after that, 39, Mark 9, 39, shortly after that, he said, if the salt shall lose his softness, what use is the salt? Right? Is that correct? If the salt loses his softness, what use is the salt? Now, sorry, 40, 48, not, not 38. When the wall diets not, and the fire quenches not. not. Now, watch this. If you add salt to water, it becomes add water. It quenches fire. If you add salt to meat, it becomes preservative. It kills the wall. Hallelujah. So if you are burnt with the fire of hardship, of torment, of sickness, when the salt of God comes on you, it quenches that fire. If you are decaying in unforgiveness and in sin, when the salt, everything that decays is decayed because there's a worm in it. When the worm of adversary gets into you, the salt gets it out. And we are the salt there. We are supposed to quench the fires of our adversary. We are supposed to take out the deadness in the body of people. We are supposed to salt them and preserve them. That's why he said he has brought us, he has reconciled us, and he has made us ministers of reconciliation. 
Hallelujah. All I need to do is simply obey the word of God. Then I am translated from a dead covenant to a living covenant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Leviticus. Le Leviticus 2, 13 began to teach that even in the Old Testament that every meat that is brought to the, to the, to the altars are sorted first. Every sacrifice is sorted. Why? Because of preservation. I pray for someone that by the glories of God which is not the internal salt, your life will be preserved. Yeah. Stand on your feet. Kalibana Tuntani Adosha. Kalabanzo Shanda Kalabana. Lean Kandos Alambrandos in the Kalabanos.